Welcome to the Cowboys Report, folks. As a quick reminder, you can get this Cowboys 4th of July t-shirt at chatsports.com slash Cowboys 4th. Links in the comments and the description. But let's focus in on what so many of you guys really want to talk about. That is one, Jadeveon Clowney. And will he end up going to the Dallas Cowboys? I'm only going to give it the one star. I'm sorry in advance for being the Debbie Downey of the group once again here. It's just not, I don't think it's what's going to end up happening for the Cowboys. I'm sorry. Like, A, I'm not even sure how reliable this report truly is. Comes from us too, from, or from Tony Pauline, who says the Saints and Cowboys are the top two teams on Clowney's preferred destinations list, which, okay, maybe that's true. Also, if Clowney desperately wanted to be on the Cowboys or on the Saints, he'd already be on the Cowboys or on the Saints. There is a balancing act here that Clowney's playing, right? He wants to get paid a significant amount of money and clearly overestimated his own market. And he wants to plan a contender. So that's why he didn't take the Browns offer. So the Cowboys and Saints definitely fit that contender list. And it just hasn't been any interest from either of those sides. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't pursue it. I would pursue Clowney because I can cut Tyrone Crawford. And in theory, if I could get, you know, Clowney down to like 10 or 12 million, which I don't think he's asking for that little at this point. If it was, I think he would have signed with Seattle a while ago. But I, I would cut Crawford and try to pursue Clowney. That, that makes sense to me, despite the fact that Clowney has never been the elite pass rusher that so many were hoping for he's never been a double digit sack guy and at this point it's fair to wonder if he's going to end up being a double digit sack guy in his NFL career but I would pursue it the issue is the Cowboys and I guess the Saints as well well they haven't shown interest there the teams like the Seattle Seahawks the Cleveland Browns Tennessee Titans well those teams have shown interest the issue is the offer either wasn't enough for Clowney or the team wasn't good enough for Clowney Yes, I'll let you guys in on a secret. There are a lot of NFL players out there who would love to play for the Dallas Cowboys. There's always one big caveat, though. The money has to be right, or at least or maybe even just outright equal as opposed to other teams. I'm not sure that's the case for Clowney. So, yes, I would go out and sign him. I would be, you could say, Downey for Clowney. But the Cowboys haven't shown interest. And go back and look since Stephen Jones really added power and took over power within this organization. They don't pay outside free agents more than like $7 million. Like They just haven't done that really since the days of Brandon Carr. So I'll make this the pinned comment because I think I'm going to see a lot of yeses. But cast your votes. Would you sign Clowney? Y for yes or N for no? Over now to some more uh, defensive line talk. How about adding another defensive end in general? Could that be a path the Cowboys end up pursuing? Two stars on this one comes to us from The Athletic, and I'm not convinced they go after Clowney, but I could see a scenario in which they go after some type of defensive end. It's what they did last year, right? Alden Smith remains in unknown and uncertainty. Randy Gregory has not yet been reinstated by the NFL. And of course, remember they traded for, for Quinn last year. Worked out really well for the Cowboys. They like pass rushers. I can see them going after another option. Now, there are other guys beyond Clowney out there on the open market. There's Everson Griffin, who many of you have asked about. Marcus Golden, who I think will end up in some capacity back on the Giants this offseason. Clay Matthews knows Mike McCarthy. Cam Waite could be a stopgap veteran option. And maybe the Cowboys decide, you know what? We got Tank. That takes care of one spot. The other spot will tag team between Tyrone Crawford, probably mostly on rundowns, kick him inside. Alden Smith is there. Dorrance Armstrong, maybe a bit of a forgotten man. Randy Gregory, Bradley and I is there. Joe Jackson, Jalen Jokes. The Cowboys have options in the end. I just wonder if maybe once we get to camp, once they see those players out there, maybe then they'll be like, okay, we got to go at somebody else. And they pick up in the phone and call a veteran. Not having the normal offseason, I think, might have prevented the Cowboys from being a bit more aggressive because there is still some unknown when it comes to getting guys like Armstrong and all those players actually on the field. I told you guys about that 4th of July shirt. Still available. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys 4th. Fully stocked. Earlier this week, I told you it was 20% off. They have changed that, folks. It is now 25% off. So if you waited, you'll save a little bit extra. Head over to Chatsports.com slash Cowboys 4th. 
That is chatsports.com slash Cowboys fourth. You can save 25% off if you use promo code LAWN. That's promo code LAWN, 25% off. That link, once again, it's in the comments and it's in the description. A common theme today is the defensive line. How about should the Cowboys sign Damon Harrison? I didn't want to make everything two stars today. I'll go, yeah, I think the Cowboys should have interest with, of course, the classic but, or I guess should say if, if it's the right cost, namely if he's cheap. Now, Dallas Morning News says, go sign Snacks Harrison. I am inclined to agree because I am, a, I am the founding member of Fatty's Only 2020. And let me tell you, Damon Harrison absolutely fits Fatty's Only 2020. Now, nose guard is no longer the urgent need that it was since the Cowboys have added Dontari Poe. But if you could find a way to rotate in Poe and Harris and let them share time, split that defensive tackle or that nose guard duty, that's the best one-two punch at nose tackle in the NFL. Now, nose tackle nowhere near as important as the three technique spot, but it does still matter in the NFL. You want guys who can stop the run. And although Harrison is not the same pasture that the pasture that, that, that Dontari Poe is, I'd actually argue he's a better run stopper than Poe is. And why it makes some more sense as we sit right now is, well, Antoine Woods is kind of caught in limbo right now where he hasn't, at least not yet, or to my knowledge, signed his exclusive rights uh, free agent tender, which he has to sign it or not play or the Cowboys rescinded. If there is no Antoine Woods, I get worried about the, the nose guard depth on this roster. So knowing that Harrison would be more expensive than Antoine Woods, exactly how much is up for debate. Maybe it's only a million bucks more. Maybe it's more like two million. Who knows? Pick a defensive tackle. Who would you rather have on the Cowboys? Type H for Damon Snacks Harrison or type W for Antoine Woods. Let's go to the offensive side of the ball now. Tavon Austin. Will the Cowboys re-sign him? Two stars. I actually don't mind this idea. I'm somewhat intrigued by it, but we also have to remember that Tavon Austin, folks, is never going to be what we want Tavon Austin to be. I am old enough to remember when the Cowboys claimed Tavon Austin would be getting a dozen to two dozen touches per game. I am still convinced to this day that they meant snaps, at least Stephen Jones did, but who knows? Now, Austin is still a free agent, has not yet signed with anybody, remains kind of out there and available to sign with a team. And the wide receiver depth is thin right now for the Cowboys. I love the top three. I don't think there, there is a better trio in the NFL right now than Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb and, and Michael Gallup. But remember, Tavon isn't going to be a top three guy. He's going to be depth. He's going to bring you some return value. These were his stats over two years with the Dallas Cowboys. That's nothing to write home about. Now, of course, he helps you on special teams and also helps you out a little bit on returns. We'll get to that part. Eh, but he's just... He's not top 10 overall pick, Tavon Austin. It's just not who, who he is. Could he be your number four receiver? I think potentially. Maybe you would prefer Devin Smith. Maybe Cedric Wilson impresses you. Or Noah Brown or John Vay Johnson. Maybe that's the, that's the name you guys want. Has the big time breakout year. It's possible. And again, it kind of comes back to that defensive end discussion. If they struggle early in camp, maybe you revisit it. You haven't seen much of them because, well, the offseason has been very different. Where Tavon might actually end up making the most sense is actually on special teams, where I like Tony Pollard on kick returns. I kind of want to see what CeeDee Lamb can do on punts, but beyond those two guys, Jordan Lewis, Cedric Wilson, Darius Anderson, those names don't move the needle for me whatsoever on special teams. Tavon, I think, has some ability there. So from that perspective, I can find a role for Tavon Austin. So I would be okay with it. But, of course, I want to hear from you guys as well. Would you re-sign Tavon Austin? Type A for yes or type B for no. A for Austin. You guys get it. I'd be down. I'd explore it. I'm not convinced it's a guaranteed path of success for the Cowboys. But if it's the vet minimum with no guaranteed money, folks, that has never once panned out wrong in NFL history. All right, back over now to some more defensive line talk. Is Alden Smith going to start? Oh, maybe. Two stars once again on this one. Nice. I went with three for Harrison because we couldn't have all two stars. But Bleacher Report has pegged Alden Smith as the Cowboys surprise starter, which is fair because there aren't that many starting jobs really open right now. 
And I get what the, the, the argument there is that, look, the last time we saw Autumn Smith full-time, and that was really in his second or third year, he was an elite pass rusher. But he hasn't played since 2015. His last couple years in the NFL with the Niners and Raiders were not what everyone was hoping for. He just didn't quite look right. Had a lot of off-the-field issues as well. Maybe he could recapture that magic. It's possible. And I think best-case scenario for Alden Smith, well, maybe realistic best-case scenario for Alden Smith, is that he's a key rotation player. Unless the Cowboys cut Tyrone Crawford, I'm not convinced this team is going to just plug one guy in at, at, at the defensive line. Maybe, in, in that case, maybe it is Alden Smith. But I think more likely, it's that they rotate in Tyrone Crawford, especially on, on first and second downs, and kick him inside on third downs, and use Alden Smith and Dorrance Armstrong and Randy Gregory. So I'll define starts by who gets the most snaps at defensive end, not who's out there you know, for the opening drive on defense. Is it C for Tyrone Crawford, S for Alden Smith, or is it G for Randy Gregory? Cast your votes for me in the comments section. Time now for a news note on Zeke Elliott, who is unfortunately, once again, not in headlines for reasons that you want. He is now the subject of another lawsuit against him, this time claiming that his dogs attacked a pool cleaner. And the alleged victim in this case is seeking uh, 200000 at, at worst, up to a million dollars in damages for the, do for the dog attack that... Uh, she claims forced her to have surgery. Now, Zeke has three dogs here, a, a Rottweiler, two Bulldogs as well, which, again, I want to make a quick note here. Rottweiler is not in here, inherently bad. I used to have one. Great dogs. Zeke's attorney, meanwhile, has, I think, some pretty compelling arguments in favor of why Zeke should not pay. The, plaint the plaintiff was unauthorized to be on the premises the day of the incident and either willfully disregarded and or negligently ignored her employer's policy, which required Elliot to be notified in advance of any visit. We look forward to further establishing the platelet's contributory negligence during the course of this matter, which is lawyer speak for, yeah, the dogs attacked her, but she wasn't supposed to be on the property. That's why they weren't, you know, put away or whatever. Now, this didn't actually happen all the way back on March 11th. Frisco police and animal services were were called. No charges or action were taken by any either of the, of the departments, which I actually think is a promising sign in favor of Zeke. And before you freak out, don't worry, this should not impact Elliott in any way whatsoever when it comes to an NFL suspension. But star Cowboys player involved in a lawsuit, we figured it was at least worth mentioning on the show. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.